So um, this month, we're going to be talking about the food and lifestyle journals. So we'll be diving into all of the new enhancements that we've recently um, released for you guys and kind of getting into how you can really optimize use with your clients and um, coach them on how to how to best use them. So kind of best practices. So uh, we'll be diving into um, all the different options you have to provide accountability, increase engagements and gain great insights, how to utilize our new Fitbit integration. Um, we'll be setting targets or so showing you how to set targets for client accountability and goal setting. And then using the journal analysis feature, um, which is great for tracking client trends and progress. So yeah, we're really excited to jump into this one because journals are just such a great way to um, encourage client accountability, uh, show support as you work with them. And they provide a really tangible look at your client's diet, their lifestyle, all their health trends. And they also give a really good opportunity for you as the practitioner to build rapport and relationships with them, which often positively affects compliance and therefore successful outcomes with um, them as well. So really excited for this one. So um, let's get started here. Jen is actually going to go ahead and share her screen. We're going to turn off our cameras so that we can focus on the demo today. So um, as we're doing that, we want to know in the chat who has utilized the new journal features with their clients. So let us know down below. Um, and at any point, if you have questions before um, we jump into this, just leave them in the chat and throughout the deep dive, we'll be kind of um, answering as we go if we have time and then a few more at the end. All right, so uh, let's just talk a little bit more about um, the benefits of using journals with your clients. So journals are a great way to measure the client's progress towards their goals with clear data. So both the practitioner and the client will gain a lot of insight using these tools. And as well, um, they're a great way of boosting a sense of progress in clients, which often translates to more motivation to kind of keep going. So keep going with their protocol, but also just continuing to log information in their journals. And it also allows for you as the practitioner to get really granular with the protocols for your clients. And that way you can make more informed recommendations as they are based on kind of what you're seeing in the journals. So kind of um, becomes a really nice cycle that way. Uh, and we know that this often leads to better client outcomes, which is often our, uh, our kind of ultimate goal. So it's great. And lastly, it kind of gives um, the practitioner and client a more holistic view. So a big picture view of the client's health when utilizing all the different journals together. So it kind of ties everything all together nicely. So we are going to get started with um, the food and mood journal. So let's stop talk, uh, Sorry, let's start off with exactly what that food journal is. So the food journal is where your client will track their food intake, as well as they have the option to include further details such as mood and location of where they are eating. And now these added details are great for giving you further context and understanding of the root of their symptoms and learning deeper insights about your client's mood and behavior in relation to what they're actually eating. So for example, how is their mindset compared to their symptoms? So if they're perhaps um, feeling really positive one day, maybe you're going to notice a difference in what they're logging as far as symptoms and what they're reaching for as far as food. And maybe a day where their mindset is not feeling um, the best, they're not feeling their best self, maybe you're going to notice a trend there as well. So you really can start to make those connections. And the food journal goes beyond just the food items. Um, so far beyond just food ingredients and meals, it also offers the ability to see macro and micronutrients. If this is something you'd like to focus on, it is optional, but if you wanna get more granular like that, you can, or you can choose to keep it more high level if that fits your practice better. So we have partnered with a food database called Nutritionix. And that includes over 600,000 food and beverage items. And lots of those come from restaurants. So really um, nice that even if your clients are eating out, um, they might be able to actually just use that search bar and find the exact item. And the nice thing too, is that it's constantly growing. So that number with NutritionX um, is always expanding. It just really helps make food journaling that much easier for your client that they can just type in a food and select it from the search bar. And it also allows, um, nutritionists also allows for nutrient values to be calculated from free form journal entries. 
So your clients can now enter free form entry. So something like um, two rice cakes with a scoop of almond butter, and they're going to get a full micro and macronutrient breakdown. So Nutrinix um, also offers nutrient claims. So these help guide and educate your clients when logging a food. So claims such as high protein, low sugar, low carb, um, you'll see those come up as you type into the search bar and select the food or the client will. And these are optional, they can be disabled, but it's kind of a nice um, way of your clients being educated on certain types of food as they're logging their entries. So within the food journal, there are a lot of actual ways to input the food. Um, and that can be done either through a desktop computer or through the um, app that clients can download onto their phones. And then you can kind of guide them on what works best for you and um, for them based on their goals and what you're focusing on. So you can choose from searching that food database that I mentioned. You have the ability or the client has the ability to use the barcode scanner. They can enter a free form entry um, upload a photo of a meal or um, kind of to expand on that, they can create meals or recipes that can be saved and then really easily added. It's also really useful to know that uh, food journal entries can be copied. So if you, um, if your client is someone who eats the same things fairly regularly, for example, they like to uh, rotate through a, a couple of breakfasts, but they tend to stick to the same things, this will make it especially easy for them. And then just to quickly mention water. So um, we have enhanced the water intake. So it's kind of like a water tally with quick add buttons. So they can add to that throughout the day as they're drinking their water so that they have kind of a running log of, um, of the water that they're intaking. So Jen is going to show you now what you'll see as a practitioner when your client logs food in their journals and how each style of food entry appears. Yeah, thanks, Britt. So that was a wonderful overview. So I see some questions in the chat saying, how can we do all of this? And that's what I'm going to show you right now. So I'm going to go over all of those features that Britt just mentioned and show you exactly what that looks like on the practitioner side. So as you can see my screen, so I'm currently in the practitioner portal. So when you log in as the practitioner and you head to your client's journal, um, this is what you're going to see. So I'm currently in the food and mood journal, and this is my client Mary Smith's entries for today, October 22nd. Um, so as you can see, and as I'm going to show you, Mary has entered all of her meals for the day, and we're going to go through those and sort of highlight the different ways that your client can input entries. Um, so one thing I wanted to mention first is that on each entry, so for breakfast, you'll be able to see a full nutrient breakdown for both the individual items, as well as the entire breakdown for, for all of the items they've inputted for that day. So I'm just going to open that up so you can see what that looks like here. And so as I scroll down, so there's something called nutrient targets, which we're going to come back to in a little bit here. Um, but if you set nutrient targets for your client, those will show up. And then as we scroll down, you can see a list of calories, macronutrients, and then as you scroll down, um, micronutrients as well. So a full breakdown for that meal. So you can open those up again for both individual items or for the entire um, day. So just wanted to mention that first. So as we look at the different in, uh, inputs that Mary has entered here, so breakfast. So the first way that your client can uh, enter their food is through actually using a recipe. So on their end, they can enter a recipe. Um, and the great thing about this is, so for Mary, she entered protein pancakes as a recipe. So for you as the practitioner, when you click on the nutrient breakdown for that meal, I'll just bring that into the middle here. Um, as I scroll down to the bottom, you'll see all of the recipe ingredients for that meal broken down. And then for each one of those ingredients, you can open up another nutrient breakdown for that specific ingredient. And you can continue to open multiple nutrient breakdowns to compare to one another in this nice, quick, easy view, which is really, really wonderful. So you're able to basically view these, you know, multiple nutrient profiles simultaneously. Okay. So as I scroll down to Mary's mid-morning snack, so another way that your clients can input 
um, entries is by using branded foods and or using the um, barcode scanner. So if they are using the mobile app, like Britt uh, referred to, then they can optionally uh, scan a barcode on a food item and that will input that right into their uh, food journal. And so if it's a branded item, that brand name will show up here, but the client can also input a branded item without the barcode scanner as well. So in this case, they've inputted that um, here and as a practitioner, you'll be able to see the brand name there. So as I scroll down to lunch, um, so this entry that Mary has made for her lunch is um, by searching the food database. So she's entered this meal, veggie scrambled eggs. And so this was something that was in the existing food uh, database um, in the platform. And it basically, like Brett mentioned earlier, is just a consolidative list of foods and meals, common foods and meals. All right. And then one of the other ways your client can input a food entry is actually um, optionally using a photo. So in this case for dinner, Mary has uh, created an entry for her dinner um, as a free form entry. So she's typed in chicken, corn and potatoes, but she's also uploaded a photo. So that's just for the practitioner's reference. And you know, depending how granular you're getting with your client on their food journal, this could be helpful. Um, also could, you know, add a bit of fun to the process as well in terms of um, taking pictures of their food um, and so on. So with, with the free form entry though, that's optional to add a photo that's not required. So, you know, Mary could have just simply entered chicken, corn and potatoes um, and had that as sort of a free form entry there. Okay. So the other thing I want to highlight that you probably noticed as I've been scrolling down is the location and mood. So this is really awesome. So your client um, has the ability to uh, track where they ate their meal, so the location um, and their mood and symptoms both before and after their meal, as well as their level of hunger before and after their meal. So this just, again, gives you another level of detail on, um, you know, how the client was feeling, where they ate, and any associated symptoms that they might have been feeling during that meal, just to really enhance that ability to coach them. And then lastly is the commentary. So you may have noticed this as well as I've been scrolling down is you as the practitioner have the option to put a comment on your client's food entry. So once the practitioner starts that comment, then the client can come in and respond. So that the, the practitioner must comment first in order for the client to have that option to reply. Um, but it's just a really nice way to have basically that real time communication with your client on a specific um, meal. So, you know, if there were further questions that you had for them about their meal or other recommendations specifically to that meal, you can comment back and forth. Um, you can also use emojis, which is really wonderful. Um, so I'll just sort of open that up. So you can use a multitude of different emojis. And then you can also do what's called a post reaction. And so this is basically an emoji, but when you enter that emoji, it'll just automatically post it. Um, so it's just a nice quick uh, way to sort of give your client a response if, you know, if there's not much to say back, but you just want to give them a thumbs up or something along those lines. Um, so that's um, the commenting piece, which uh, we're really excited about and think that really enhances the experience for your client when working with journals. Okay, and then at the very bottom here, this is your client's water tally. So they, they on their end can easily input the amount of water that they've consumed throughout the day. Um, and then you obviously have that um, documented here in their food journal. Okay, I'm going to scroll back up to the top and just highlight a couple more things here. Um, so the first thing is just on the left hand side, you'll notice this calendar. So this is basically giving you as a practitioner a quick view into which days your client has entered um, a food entry and which days have comments on the entries. So the days that are just shaded, um, in this case shaded green, but if you're um, 
if you're using a branded portal, then it, it will be your own branded colors, but in this case, it's green. Um, and so the shaded days are the ones that Mary, my client, has made entries. And then the days with diagonal stripes are the days that there are also comments on those entries. So it's just a nice quick view, again, for you as a practitioner to be able to at any point have a quick glance onto, you know, is your client being compliant with their entries? First of all, is there any days that you need to follow up with them on if they haven't made entries? Um, and then which days have commentary on them if you, you know, want to go back to that at any point easily. Navigating over to the right hand side here. So we've got a couple options when you're inside of the food and mood journal. So the first is clicking on the three dots, you can actually flag the day for review. So this is really helpful if you, you know, you've maybe taken a peek at the journal, but you want to make sure you come back later, you can actually flag it for review. Next, you've got the option to edit your target. So again, we're going to come back to those targets because that's the whole piece that we want to dive into with you. Um, you can mark your client's journal entry as reviewed, and then you have the ability to actually edit the journal. So this is something I'm going to show you um, because this is where you actually have the option to show or hide the nutritional details and targets. So um, let me just click into that. And then so this takes us to the food and mood journal. I'm going to go edit here. And then this is what you can toggle on. Um, if you want to hide all nutritional details and nutrient targets from your client's view. Um, and so that's optional, but that is available to you depending on how you work with your client. Okay, so um, thank you, Jen, for that demo. So yeah, I, I noticed a couple people were a little bit confused that the screen wasn't moving right at the beginning. Um, we'll be kind of overviewing everything and then Jen is going to jump into her demo. So yeah, as she showed, you have the option to hide those nutrient details. So depending on your clientele and who you work with, this could be quite important. Um, you can keep the food journals quite high level and then avoid those potential triggers for clients that may not benefit from seeing this information. So as a practitioner, you will still have access to see this information on the back end. The client will not see it on their end. Um, as we built the journals, we did include a variety of options to tailor the settings so that they work within your scope. So I encourage you guys to um, explore around a little bit, take the time to review those settings so you know what your options are and you can really make it work for, for your practice. Um, I did see a question, somebody asking if you hide those nutrient details, does that hide things for every client? Um, no, so you can do this individually for each client. So if you do have um, a client, for example, that may have um, an order um, disordered eating history, you can hide it for them. And if you have clients that would actually still benefit from seeing those details, you can um, leave that for them to see. So um, there's obviously quite a lot of options available when it comes to tracking food. And as a practitioner, you really get to provide your client which direction you'd like them to take. So you can um, play around, make it as easy as possible for them to encourage compliance, um, but still do it in a way that you get the information you need as their practitioner to support them. So things like snapping a photo, building out some of those recipes they frequently eat um, or coaching them to do that, or the ability to copy entries, make it really easy. And as Jen showed, um, it's a really great way to interact with your clients by commenting or adding a quick emoji. Um, really good for accountability and engagement for those that you work with. Okay, so we are going to jump into lifestyle journals. So the lifestyle journals are where clients can capture day-to-day -day habits, activities, and other metrics that are tied to their well-being. So they help connect the dots to your client's wellness journey. You can kind of think of them like extra uh, pieces to the puzzle so you can start to see the, the entire big picture. The lifestyle journals are where you can capture activity, um, mood, you can uh, capture information about bowel movements, sleep, and then we also include a free form note. So this is great if there is something additional you routinely want to capture from your clients that kind of doesn't fit into those other categories or if the client has something additional that is worth noting to you as a practitioner, this is a great place for them to share that with you. 
We'll talk about this uh, in a little bit more detail later on, but the lifestyle journal is also where information is shown from a synced Fitbit device that your client has integrated into their account. The lifestyle journals can be tailored to your practice and how you work with your clients. So at any point you can disable um, the journal entry types to pre prevent your client from logging, say activity, measurements, bowel movement information, mood and or sleep entries if they're not a part of your focus. So you get to kind of pick and choose what you'd like them to input entries on and then you can leave out any that don't apply. So Jenna's going to kind of take back over and she's gonna run you through some of the example entries to give you a glimpse into how you can coach your clients to utilize these lifestyle journals. Yeah, thanks, Brett. So as you all see, I've just navigated to Mary's lifestyle section of her journal. So this is still for today, October 22nd. So this is going to highlight um, actually all of the different types of lifestyle entries that your client can make. So, you know, they may not use all of these in one day, but we wanted to input them all for the purposes of this to be able to highlight to you um, everything that you, your client has the option to basically track in their lifestyle journal. So the first thing that I wanted to highlight at the top here is sleep. So this is a manual sleep entry. So your client has the option to, like Britt mentioned, actually link their Fitbit if they use one and that can pull sleep information like uh, it shows right here. But if they don't have a Fitbit, they can actually just make manual sleep entries and it'll look more like this top entry here. So, you know, they can put in their bedtime when they woke up, um, the duration of sleep, they can let you know what the clock quality of their sleep was, um, how easily they fell asleep. Um, and then they can also add any additional comments um, on that. So, you know, if Mary had any additional things she wanted to share regarding her sleep, she could enter that as well. So as we scroll down, these are the two Fitbit um, lifestyle entries. So Fitbit sleep and Fitbit activity. So again, if your client has a Fitbit, they can integrate that with their account and um, they can do that really easily. And then that's going to just automatically pull both the sleep and activity data into their lifestyle journal. So as you can see, Mary has both a sleep entry and an activity entry from today. Um, however, you know, as the day goes on, there may be additional data that's added to activity entry as she gets more steps. Hopefully there's more than 300 steps in her day um, and, and so on. So those are, those are the two Fitbit entries there. So as I scroll down here, the next lifestyle entry that your client has, the option to enter is measurements. So in this case, you can see that Mary has entered both her weight and her blood sugar for the day. However, your client also can enter a range of other measurements such as their height, BMI, body fat percentage, uh, blood pressure, heart rate, and blood oxygen level. So they can you know, optionally add all of those or some combination of those measurements to their daily lifestyle journal. So as you can see, as I scroll down, your client can also enter their bowel movements uh, for the day, um, their mood. Um, so with their mood and their bowel movements, they can enter multiple of those for a day if they want to. Um, and again, adding any commentary um, with regards to the mood entry, your client can sort of just type that in a free form um, way. And then right here, we've got activity. So this is the uh, manual activity entry. So again, if your client does not have a Fitbit linked, then they can make manual activity entries into their lifestyle journal. And this is how it's going to look. So they can input the time, the duration, um, the calories burn will automatically populate. However, I'm going to show you in a moment where you can disable that um, feature uh, if that's not something you want um, for working with your clients. And, and the nice thing about the manual activity entry, um, when your client on their side, when they're entering that into the journal, they could just simply type uh, 45 minutes of Pilates. And that's going to automatically populate the duration and the calories burned for that activity. Um, so it's very seamless on their side of things. And then the last item here is your client has the ability to add a custom note. So a free form note to their lifestyle journal. And this is nice just, you know, if there's anything else they want to let you know about, or you want to ask them to track, 
um, that isn't, you know, that doesn't fall into one of the existing lifestyle categories that I just went through, they can just put in a note like this. Um, and so that's just really helpful too, um, to help you further customize the types of information that you might want to collect from your client. Okay. I think that's, that's all of the types of entries in the lifestyle journal. Great. Thanks, Jan. I'm seeing a lot of questions regarding if Fitbit is our only um, smart device that can be integrated. Um, a lot of people are asking questions about things like Apple Watch and Garmin and Aura Rings. At this time, Fitbit is our only um, integration. So just wanted to clear that up. I know that's a very popular question. Um, but through Jen's demo, you can really see how utilizing the various lifestyle components really starts to, to tie everything together. So you really start to get that holistic picture of their overall health and progress. And of course, you can tailor this to fit your practice and utilize the journals and metrics that tie in with what you do and who you serve. So we have a question for you guys and feel free to answer down below in the chat. We wanna know what has been your biggest takeaway or what has stood out to you so far um, in our deep dive. Um, share with us in the, in the chat down below. And I did wanna answer one more question. A lot of people are asking how they can um, educate their clients on how to navigate the journals. We do have a lot of great resources on our YouTube uh, channel. One of those is a tour of the client portal. So this is up and available. You can share that with your clients so that they really get that education um, on how to utilize everything. Okay. So next we're going to talk in a little bit more detail about our latest integration, which is of course, syncing Fitbit devices. So um, clients can now link their devices to automatically sync activity and sleep data to their lifestyle journals. So this is available in our starter plan and up. So that's just something we wanted to mention right off the top there. But the Fitbit um, device integration makes it really easy to track activity and other metrics. So all the client has to do is integrate their wearable device in their client portal and then just wear the device. So it is something that they're doing on their end. And so those that have Fitbit will automatically have data and key activity metrics, including steps, distance, heart rate, calories burned, and sleep activity logged in their journals. And as we know, as practitioners, oftentimes making things as easy as possible really helps with that client compliance piece. So this is a great option for those that do have a Fitbit. Um, so when they pair their device, the platform will prompt them on which information they'd like to share and sync. So they'll be able to um, select activity and exercise, sleep, heart rate, and then um, it will require their profile to be shared. And that sync, like Jen mentioned, kind of happens throughout the day. So um, as a practitioner, when you're looking at their journal entries, um, you might wanna kind of time that so that you're getting a really comprehensive look at their full day rather than just you know looking in the morning and seeing something like 300 steps. It won't obviously be a great representation of their entire day. Okay, I know a lot of people had questions about these targets and goals. So we're going to jump into that next. So within our journals, we have the ability to set targets. So targets are goals that you can create within the journals to provide ideal metrics for the clients to hit. And there are a number of different categories you can use to set targets. So sleep duration and bedtime, you can set targets for activity. So including total exercise or calories burnt. Calories is optional. You can choose to just include exercise time. Um, daily water intake. And then you have nutrient targets. So that includes both macronutrients, micronutrients, and calories. And then you can choose what you wanna focus on. And then we also have the ability to set targets for weight loss and um, weight gain. So again, you can really tailor this, use whatever makes sense with the clients you're working with. And once you've created those targets that you wish to use, um, they're a, a really good way of kind of at a glance seeing if your clients are on track with them is to make use of the daily summary. So you can see that on your screen kind of in that top right there, that little trophy icon helps signify when a target has been met. So as a practitioner, you have the option of clients seeing these targets on their end. So if they need some tangible benchmarks for motivation and accountability, these are a really great option. Otherwise, um, if you feel like you wanna keep them out of view from your client, you also have that option as a practitioner. You'll see them on your end, but the client will not see them. 
So Jen is going to run you through creating targets and um, a look at our little trophy icon and where that kind of pops up throughout the, the journals. Yeah, for sure. So thanks, Britt. So when you're inside of your client's journal, as I am right now, you can actually just navigate to this little target icon. So that's where you're going to be able to actually set up your client's targets. Um, and so as Brent had mentioned, the targets you have available are your client's water intake, weight, daily activity, nightly sleep, and then nutrient consumption. So these are all optional for you to set up. For Mary, I have all of them set up. And to customize them, you simply just go into edit, and in this case, for daily water intake, you can select how many glasses of water you want your client to be consuming each day. And then optionally, you can choose whether you want them to see that target or not. Um, so that just gives you that extra granular ability in terms of what they're seeing, what they're not seeing. Um, and then one thing I just, I wanted to actually go into the nutrient consumption target just to show you um, how much options you have available to you for setting up those targets. Um, so as you can see here with, with Mary, we only have a couple set up. So I just set up fiber and then I set up vitamin D at the bottom, but you can set up targets for calories, their macronutrients, micronutrients. Um, so there's a lot of different um, options for you there to set up those targets for your clients. And again, you have the option to allow them to see that or not. So you can either use it you know, just on the practitioner side as a tool to help you further, you know, guide your client, come up with their protocol and whatnot, and or allow them to see it to have them, you know, be involved in that, that piece of the journey. So um, totally up to you on that front, which is really nice to have those options. Yeah, so that can be a great reason to also touch base with your client with these um, targets and trophies. So for example, if they have a number of days where they're hitting their targets, you can really celebrate that win with them. Um, send them a message, you know, through the secure chat and give them a little, you know, praise. Or if they're not reaching their targets, you can check in with them, um, maybe see if they need any additional support. Or maybe you need to dig a little bit deeper to understand any roadblocks that they might be um, experiencing. Okay, so let's next talk about the journal analysis. So they... sorry, sorry to interrupt. I was just going to, there was one question I saw that would be worth addressing. Just someone had asked, yeah. is there a mood target for meditation or self-care? So not at the moment. So these targets that we've shown here are the only targets you can set up at the moment. However, you know, if you do want to track mood, that again is something you can do in your client's uh, lifestyle journal. Um, so again, I can just sort of head back there so we can look at that again, just scrolling down here to the mood track. So um, at the moment, however, you can um, have your client track their mood um, in, in good detail there. So hopefully that helps answer the question for you. Yeah, and I'm just going to add to that a little bit, Jen, to say that you still have the ability to use your tasks. So um, we call them tasks, but you can definitely view those as goals as well with your clients. So if you're not seeing anything um, that's currently existing in the targets, um, that would be another way to kind of instill some accountability and motivation in your client to just kind of create some, some tasks. So um, just another option of something to check out that's within your um, portal and your account. Yeah, that's a really great suggestion, Brett. Yeah. And one thing I'll mention too is, you know, if that's something that you guys would like to see in terms of additional targets, then we're very, very open and willing to receive your feedback and, and um, feature uh, requests. So you can at any time submit those to our help at practicebetter.io. So yeah, just wanted to throw that in there. If there's anything that you think of as we go along or anything you'd like to see, you're always welcome to submit those requests to our team. Awesome. Okay, so we are going to start talking about the journal analysis, um, which is one of my favorite um, features of the journals in general. Um, they give you the ability to view, compare, and analyze data from your client's journal. So you'll have an access um, to a list of predefined reports that you can use to track trends and the progress of your clients. 
So these come in graphs that provide a visual of compi compiled entries for easy inference. They help you make connections to then further educate the client on symptoms and trends they may be experiencing and provides for you as the practitioner deeper insight um, rather than just looking at all of those individual journal responses one by one. So if you want to see a really holistic view of your client's health and progress, we've also added the ability to compare different journal entries against each other. So you can start to take notice of how things are interrelated. Um, as practitioners, we know that oftentimes um, all of these things have an effect on each other. So this is a really good way of getting a view of that. So we have um, predefined reports that you can select from to analyze the entries, including um, high nutrient foods. So foods high in a specific nutrient and the number of times consumed. Measurements, so you can compare weight, height, BMI, and other measurements and vitals. Nutrient consumption. So this compares um, nutrient consumption for a given period. So for example, something like uh, calories versus carbohydrates. Sleep, you can compare duration of time slept versus um, awakenings and times awake, and then calories in and out. So calories consumed versus calories burned. And then our Fitbit journals. So uh, you can pull tracking on those to see their sleep and activity. Um, so if they have that synced device, this will pull up for them as well. And then of course we have um, the journal entries that you're used to from the past that we've enhanced that you can analyze and compare together. So bowel movements, activity, water consumption. And then we've also added the option um, to view the journal and measurement charts as line charts. So previously the primary metric could only be displayed as a bar chart. So if you prefer a line chart visually over the bar graph, perhaps for you it's easier to view the information at a glance, you can select how you'd like the primary metric to be displayed. So Jen is going to run you through a few examples of the journal analysis feature. Yeah, thanks Britt. So this is the journal analysis. So I was just, um, how I got here was I'll just go back so you guys can see. So I was just in Mary's journal and I just simply clicked on analysis. Um, so this takes me right to Mary's journal analysis. And right now, as you can see, we're currently by default viewing nutrient consumption. But again, as Britt mentioned, you can choose from a range of different points that you want to analyze, such as activity, bowel movements, calories, measurements, water consumption, sleep, and so on. Um, and then you also have the option to actually filter your analysis based on duration. So it defaults to 30 days, but you can do anything from a minimum of seven days up to a maximum of two years using the custom uh, filter here. And that will allow you to view it for a maximum of two years. So it allows you to really get granular with how you're viewing this data um, from your client. So to sort of highlight, you know, how this looks, the capabilities of the journal analysis, we're going to sort of look at three different um, comparisons here. So the first one is what I've got up right now. So this is a nutrient consumption comparison. I'm just going to keep it on 30 days for the purposes of this example. But again, you can change that at any time. Um, and then for this, uh, in this case, we're comparing currently calories versus sugars but you can then go in and change those to anything you want to compare uh, against. And then in addition, you can further um, you know, break this down in, by meal time. So if you wanted to simply look at calories versus sugars at breakfast or lunch or dinner, you could do that as well, which is really nice. So yeah, and what I wanna to mention too is just highlighting sort of this this log below the chart. So this actually breaks down all of the um, data points by date um, and by you know which data you pulled. So if it's calories versus sugars, then those are going to show up there. So it just allows you to actually see a full breakdown in addition to viewing the chart, which is really nice. So the next um, comparison that I want to use as an example is measurements. So I'm going to select measurements here, and then we're going to do a weight compared to Fitbit sleep duration. So that's just, you know, as an example to highlight one of the Fitbit um, pieces of information. So I'm just scrolling down to Fitbit sleep duration here and selecting that. So now this is comparing uh, weight measurement versus Fitbit sleep duration. 
Um, and so as Brett had mentioned, you can choose to actually change um, the primary metric for your graph. Um, so by default, um, one thing I'll also mention is that we, um, we don't put, you know, we ignore sort of the missing data points. So for example, on October 11th, there wasn't an input of sleep. And so if you actually want to connect those, you have that option too, just to sort of keep it a little more fluid. And then you have the option to use a line for the primary metric if that's uh, preferable for you. So those two options are available by simply clicking the more options button at the top right corner here. Um, and you can turn those on and off anytime. So I'll just take them off so we can see what it looked like originally again. So that's just another way that you can sort of customize your view of the journal analysis. The next one that I wanted to highlight is actually doing a custom comparison. So this allows you to compare any of the data points from your client's journal. Um, so in this case, we're going to do activity duration versus blood sugar. And those are already populated here for me, but um, yeah, you can just go in and select any other um, point of comparison that you wanted to use. So one thing I wanted to mention with this is you'll notice that there is a blue dotted line right here. And so what that is, is that when you've set up metrics that have targets, so for example, in this case, the, uh, the activity target, which is a 30 minute activity target, you'll see that dotted horizontal line uh, in the chart. Um, so that just allows you to have a quick view of, you know, is your client meeting that target? Um, and then as we scroll down into the log here, you'll notice that some of the entries have this blue trophy. And so this is actually highlighting the days when your client met their target. And again, in this case, the target was activity duration over 30 minutes. So anything over 30 minutes, you're going to see that, uh, that trophy icon. Um, so if we scroll down to say this day where there was only 20, that won't be there. Um, so just giving you more insight into your client's entries and the targets you've set for them. All right, so I'm just gonna navigate us up to the top um, right corner here. Just a couple other options that you have available to you in the journal analysis. Firstly, clicking the more options button here, you can optionally choose to export your client's journal entries. And so this will export as an Excel uh, document and you can then utilize that however you'd like. So if you do want to download those entries uh, from the uh, dashboard, then you can do that just by simply clicking export entries here. You can also from the journal analysis, uh, adjust the targets. So this is just another spot that you can go back to adjust those targets. And then if you wanna go back to the journal entries, you can simply select a view entries here. So one really amazing, cool thing about the journal analysis is yes, so we are looking at this uh, from the practitioner perspective, but you can actually optionally provide your client with access to view all of this analysis as well. So they would be able to do the exact same thing that you are doing on your end in terms of putting in the, all the comparisons and viewing um, the charts and whatnot. And so to um, to select that uh, capability for your client, we're actually going to go to settings and preferences, portal preferences, and we're just going to scroll down here to food and lifestyle journals. And then this is where you would either choose to allow your clients to view the journal analysis by having that selected or unselect that if you do not want them to have access to view that analysis. So yeah, it's just totally up to you in terms of how you, how much information you want to share with your client and, you know, if them having the ability to view that analysis might be supportive to their, um, their you know, their client journey with you, then that could be a really nice thing to give them access to. All right, I think that sort of wraps up everything I wanted to highlight with the analysis for now. Yeah, you can see from Jen's demo that the journal analysis feature helps paint a really comprehensive insight into your client's progress with their goals. So great way to see connection between certain activities and how they're related to one another and how they can easily become a really great educational piece that you can share with your client. I did see somebody ask how um, 
you can kind of play around with this from the client's perspective. So we do encourage you to have a test account. So we do have an help, a help article all about how to get that set up, but essentially it would be kind of using a secondary email address to create a fake um, client, if you will. And that way you can see things from their perspective so that if questions do come up um, on their end, you can guide them on how to utilize their portal. Um, but if there ever comes a question that you can't answer, your clients can also reach out to our customer um, success team. So one thing to keep in mind that um, they also have access to our, our team. Okay, so we um, have a couple of minutes. So we can answer uh, a few questions. So Jen um, can take a look as well. And we're gonna actually um, see what you guys are asking here. Uh, so I see a question. Um, can you allow access on a case by case basis to the journal analysis? So that's just a setting that's simply across your all clients at the moment. Um, so that would be again through the portal preferences. Um, yeah, so it's not something you can currently select um, for certain clients and not others at the moment. However, again, very open to your feedback. So please do submit that as a feature request if you would like to see it, but really great question. All right, so Wilma, I know you have a burning question. We're going to answer that for you. So the macro nutrient target um, when it comes to um, creating targets, so Jen is going to just quickly show us that when you're creating a nutrient consumption target, it is done by um, grams, I believe, for the different measurements. So um, you're asking if you can do it by percentage so that they can split their kind of daily intake 40, 30, 30, for example. Um, Jen, I, I think you're there, but yes, the, the measurement that we have is based on grams for those. So if, um, like Jen mentioned, if you guys have any requests of things that you're not seeing in the portal as you're using them, you can always send um, any kind of request to our development team for consideration for future refreshes and updates. Okay, where can you find the journal section? So when um, you are looking to review these or set them up for your clients, Jen is just going to navigate and show you that when you're accessing your client list, you'll have a, a menu on the left-hand side and you can click journals there and that will bring you um, to all the different um, settings and feed that you can review and then kind of set things up accordingly for your clients. Yeah, and one thing I wanted to mention, Britt, that I not, don't think I touched on yet is just when we've been looking at the journals, I've been sort of looking specifically at food and mood and lifestyle separately. But as a practitioner, you have the option to view all entries in one view as well. So this just basically puts everything onto one page for you. So as I scroll down, you can sort of see that this is all the food entries. And then here we go, all the lifestyle entries. So it just sort of puts it all in one place if you don't want to click. Uh, click back and forth and you sort of just want to see one view and it kind of depends you know if you your client is utilizing all of these op, you know options and entries then it might be kind of like long to scroll down through all of these to get to them so that's why it's nice to have them split up too but if your client is only utilizing a couple aspects of the journals then it might make more sense for you to just view all entries so those you know are both available to you yeah, that's great. Um, I did also see a question of whether or not supplements can be included in the food journal. So not at this time, we don't have anything kind of preset to capture that information. Um, it's a great idea. So something that um, can be submitted as a request. Um, you can use the free form entry for that at this time that could be kind of a workaround to work with with your clients. Um, but not at this time, we don't have supplements that are going towards those nutrient targets that are being set. Yeah. All right. Um, we also had a question about what level of plan that we're demoing on today. So maybe Jen, you want to talk about that. Um, I believe that we're working from a team account. Yeah. Um, yeah. But these features will be available to, um, all levels. I believe that Fitbit integration, you need to be starter and up. That's correct. Yeah. 
That's correct. Yeah. So it's it is, this account that I'm using is the team time, but there's nothing that we've looked at so far that like is only available on the team plan. So you don't need to worry about that. Like Brent said, it's the Fitbit piece. That integration is only available on the starter plan account. Great. All right. Um, yeah, so uh, we have a question about where clients can see certain things. So this would be a really great opportunity for you to um, go in as your test client to get an idea. So play around with um, creating some entries and then going in as the pr practitioner to comment and all of that, and then go back into your test client account and, and see kind of what they're seeing from their end. All right. So I think we're going to turn our cameras back on and say wrap this up here. Okay, so Jan, I can't turn my camera on. Okay, here, let me, I'm just gonna stop sharing my screen and let me see if I can make Brett the host again here. There we go. <laughs> Sorry about that, Brett. I think That's you should okay. be able to turn yourself back on now. There we go. <laughs> All right, so okay. thank you for joining we hope that this deep dive was really helpful in showing you kind of an overview of how you can use the new um, food and lifestyle journal enhancements to gain deeper insights with your client's journey and how you can up-level that client engagement um, and experience for them. So for any follow-up questions that we didn't get to today, I know there was a lot coming through the chat and Q&A, please feel free to reach out to customer success. So you can email them. It's help at practicebetter.io. And for everyone asking about a replay, yes, we'll be sending you one straight to your inbox. So if you've registered and you're here or um, you kind of had to come midway through, no problem. You'll be getting that replay straight to your inbox. So keep an eye out for that. And we always post our deep dives on YouTube. So our YouTube is full of really great informational videos, um, both as the practitioner and we have some for the client as well. So you can take a look at those, but. We want to say thank you for joining us for the last hour and learning about the journals. And um, yeah, we're, we're so appreciative of you guys being here. Yeah, thank you all so much for all of your wonderful questions. We know we tried to answer as many as we could, but you know, the journals, there's a lot you can do. So we hope this was helpful. And then like we've said multiple times, we are here to support you with any further questions through our customer success team at help at practice.io. So definitely don't feel overwhelmed or that you're alone. Um, we're here to support you the whole way. So yeah, thank you. Thanks, Britt. All right. Thanks, guys. We'll see you later. Bye, everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye.